Welcome to the channel folks, Clunkers and Classics. We're going to take a little break for a couple days on the Nomad. I'm about halfway through uh, trying to get the AC system modified and working. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but just waiting on uh, about to post the first half first part of the video see if any of you guys can offer some advice what to do waiting on a friend of mine gonna come over next day or so or so he says and we'll see uh, that and probably order some different type of solder and stuff and anyway and just take a break for a couple days got a little job to do just spent a few hours cleaning the shop here here's where the nomads gonna come in fixing to uh, drive it in it'll fit but I need a couple of feet in front a couple of feet in back so I can paint it uh, I may just paint half of it because the front half is going to have to be cleared anyway uh, so it's going to be kind of I don't know anyway we're going to see how much room we got this is about the cleanest the shop's been in about a year. It ain't going to get no cleaner. I just don't have the room to, you know, I uh, built the shop. I built all these shelves, but I run out of room real quick. Anyway, uh, craps there and there. We got enough room to paint. I've done it many times before. So, anyway... So I moved everything out here over onto that slab because this slab's got, I don't think I ever told anybody, I got a Harley right here. I need to cover it up some more. I'd hardly ever drive it. But this, uh, yeah, this area here isn't for a car to come in. You got the shelves there, the Harley, this crap. So that's what this crap here, it's not going to be moved anytime soon although it would be a good working space but i got two right here on the concrete okay so we're going to uh i got a brand new aluminum radiator from a sponsor alloy works they've sent me some in the past got one in the nomad uh what else did i put some got one in the gto uh I got an aluminum radiator, but not from them in one of my Jeeps. So I got plenty of aluminum radiators in these cars, and I love them. Uh, they're great, especially when you have the backup electric fans. So that's what I got. We'll unpack it here in a minute. Uh, I haven't even unpacked it, but yeah, I think it's a four core with uh, two electric fans. So we're going to put that in the 69 Chevelle here. I'm going to bring that around. I'm going to put the Nomad inside, bring the Chevelle where the Nomad is. Uh, no, i got to use two hands. Anyway, I have to put the jumper box and a little bit of gas in there, start it up. We did that about a month or so ago. We started all these up. Well, not all of them, but we started the Nova and the Chevelle up on another video. Uh, this was supposed to be my kind of daily driver that I would drive the most and then that got put off because I got the purple Le Mans the flying purple people eater and I started driving that and then uh, I haven't really driven any hot rods in a while other than the Nomad I've driven probably four or five times I've taken it out uh, I've been driving my truck my Jeep Ford Fusion, I haven't even really been driving much. But anyway, uh, this was supposed to be the main car, the main hot rod to be driving around in until I got the Nomad, and the Nomad will probably be that car. Or at least from now until after Hot Rod Power Tour after that. I don't know, I'd probably rather be driving a two-door coupe, but we'll see. So I'm uh, trying to keep it in great shape. Uh, runs and drives grow well. It needs, it still needs an alignment. Drives pretty good up to about 60 miles an hour, but this one front tire still leaning. I got so many shims on that A-frame. I don't know what's up with it. Something's messed up. Uh, 
But yeah, I planned on adding stuff to this. But let me, uh, I'll probably rinse it off, bring it around, rinse it off, get it up here. And we'll unpack the new radiator and uh, we'll get started. Okay, so I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, guys, let's put a little bit of gas in it. Put the uh, booster box, fired right up first crank. God, I love this car. Love the way it sounds, the way it runs. Uh, when I first started YouTube, I made about three videos on this, and then I later on I put them all into one. So it's a long one with uh, prepping it, painting it, stuff like that. But I started YouTube way after I started building this car. It took a long time as a frame off restoration. The 350 out of a 75 Corvette, got an Edelbrock intake, Edelbrock carburetor. It's the one I'd like to maybe build a console that's a lot better than the Nomad one, but we'll see. But uh, yeah, I love this car. My $100 eBay X-Pipe do-it-yourself kit there, man, it sounds great. I would have done that on the Nomad, but I got the side pipes instead. Uh, I probably won't wash it because I think it's fixing to rain. And then I'm just going to park it back, back over there. Okay, so, of course I built this car good for a driver. So, well, I didn't even have an old radiator. This, this car was just it had no drivetrain it had no interior uh it was just in pieces some guy you know one of them oh i'm gonna restore it actually he was a young kid you know young but he tore the whole thing apart at every nut and bolt even took the body off the frame and then just left it and it sat for you know i don't know how long uh so yeah when i so he, at the time I was doing work for customers uh, about, oh, probably seven, eight years ago. And then he wanted his truck painted and I had an ad that I would do paint body work and I'll, I'll take trades in. So he wanted his truck painted and uh, I painted his truck and he gave me what <laughs> the Chevelle and he brought it to me all the way from Fort Worth. So he kind of set the body on the frame and put everything on a trailer on boxes of parts and stuff no no new parts he never did buy anything new for it and uh, that's the way I got it so uh, then I finally got a drive train together um, so anyway and you know it's got Subaru seats in it people were oh you put just to put Chevelle seats in it no yeah, well, nobody sent me Chevelle seats. See, that's the thing. So, <laughs> these are out of a junk, uh, not Subaru. Subaru seats are in the Nova. These are out of a Mazda. Oh, shit. I'm trying to think here. I got a Mazda Miata. It's not a Miata. It's a. Uh, uh, I'll think of it here in a minute. Eclipse. Mitsubishi Eclipse. That's what they're out of. And I bought the new door panels and uh, carpet headliner new headliner i think yeah there's the cover for the dome light comes up uh fell off but yeah it's like 90 99 done it's you know and i bought all new weather stripping and i bought the wheel well chrome new rims new tires like the nomad okay so i bought a new radiator but uh at the time I just wanted it put together with new stuff. You know, I got new headers, $100 eBay headers, work great, sound great. Uh, new distributor. Uh, I had that Edelbrock carburetor 
an intake and put that on the Corvette motor. Oh, and I had the valve covers. Actually, a friend of mine gave me give me the intake and valve covers, I believe. Um, so anyway, I bought a new radiator, but I bought the cheapest brand new one on eBay. And it's just a plastic tank. Uh, and it was like, I don't know, 68 bucks or something at the time. And this shroud is off a Chevy van. <laughs> and it sits about an inch higher, or whatever that is, higher than... Uh, but that's fine. We may take that off and leave it since I got the electric fans. We'll have to figure that out. So anyway, to make this super reliable and take it on trips, because I don't do it as often. You know, in my younger days, I used to drive everywhere. I've driven across Canada a couple times, across the United States. Uh, I've been everywhere. And that's why I like to build the car, so it's going to last on a big long road trip chances are if this is going to crack at some point rather have an aluminum one now the radiator size is the same because i thought about you know we still haven't finished this el camino yet we're still we're going to get back to that uh but it's the same size radiator as what's in here so i thought about put, get, asking for the aluminum radiator for the el camino and then i thought well I'd rather have it in the Chevelle um, for reasons I just stated. So this one, it'll just be a backup. It's still brand new, works great. I haven't driven this car that much, really. Uh, no, no long trips. So we're going to save that for, uh, we may put it in the El Camino. I think the El Camino one's okay, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so here it is here. And I think they wanted a video of it being opened up. So we'll open it up. As I said, I think I asked for the four core with the, with the uh, dual fans. Yeah, these are uh, pretty good radiators and very reasonably priced. I'll put the link in the uh, description. And they got radiators for just about any car, especially old ones. They had a problem with the website there a while back, but uh, I just checked it. You can put in cars and uh, it'll come up now. I think those are little relays and stuff for the fans. Yep, and there's the dual fans. Okay, well, let me get this unpacked. Uh, yeah, there's even a cap on there. It's not going to be too hard. It's just that I got a few little things. That shroud kind of rigged on there. And the overflow here kind of zip tied. Other than that, uh, just the two transmission lines here. The overflow. And then these, these four bolts here. And then it'll just slide up. And we'll slide that one in. I don't know if I'll hook up the fans right away. I might. And I don't think we're going to use this shroud. Because I think they'll probably be in the way of the... But anyway, I'm a big believer in the uh, engine fan to cool it. So, and you know, if you're building a hot rod and don't care about that, yeah, you could delete the fan off this engine and use the electric. But I, I like to use both, well, especially the engine fan, and then use the electric ones as a backup, just like I'm going to use on the Nomad. Just for, you know, you get caught in traffic 110 degrees in the middle of nowhere, and you're 
need a little extra cooling okay so let me start on this and uh i'll probably set you up here and and uh do a little live action on it but yeah that's what we got going very very simple job pretty much and uh i'll be back oh and uh the nomad does fit in there uh, we'll walk around it. Let me just close this door. Well, I don't have any, uh, I don't have the lights on. Probably stand here. I think I'll have enough room to paint. All I gotta do is paint this tailgate area here. I don't have to be a contortionist underneath or nothing. So it's just from here up, uh, on the back. Okay, now I got enough room here to come along the sides. And... I got enough room here to do the front. So I think we got just enough room to paint it. Uh, we'll go over go over this more in depth when we get ready to paint it. Well, it's got to be a sanded down. Uh, but anyway, that's coming up real soon. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, that took all of about five minutes. <laughs> Gotta love working on old cars. Two radiator hoses, two transmission lines, four bolts there, and then I had those two there. But anyway, there it is. Like I said, it was new, so it's in great shape. Okay, and then the shroud just a one piece well it's two piece but it's stapled okay and I had that zip tied along the bottom okay yeah that's it we'll see if the little rubber got the little rubber grommets there but with these Chevrolets you can put them there 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 but I'm thinking that's the right one yeah, and that antifreeze, I think, was that gold stuff I accidentally bought. I like I like the green, so you can see green. But, yeah, that came out, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's that gold crap. Okay, and here's the two, two rubber grommets right here for the top. Okay, run, it, run into one snag here. They sent... You know the little relays and stuff to hook up the fans and then they sent this little sensor but it's a little bit too big to fit in there now I had an extra uh, water gauge temperature gauge let me take that out because I kind of screwed it up putting it back in but uh yeah that's too big um so i already have a temperature gauge right right here right in there and it comes up and uh i got it hooked up and it works so i got some brass I have to move all this stuff here. This thing here is full of brass stuff. Um, we'll see if we can find a plug. If not, I'll try to get another another one of these. And uh, yeah, let's hook up the extra water gauge that I got maybe. I have two of them going or something. Okay, and then that's where the two trans... This, this here is for a little extra something or rather just like this one was extra and then this one actually has a plug let me see if i can see if this will fit in there this is plastic though see your weakest spot on the aluminum radiator is a plastic plug that's what i i don't think that's gonna fit no it's different anyway um like I said, I, for the one for my Jeep, because I take that to Colorado every year, although I didn't go last year, 
because my dad's too sick to go. They, they usually go every year. Um, I had aluminum radiator for them, uh, but not from alloy works. And what it had was a plastic petcock here. And guess what? Guess what? Blew or didn't uh, crack or did something was that. And I was luckily I was right by my right by a hotel I stayed at when I noticed it the next morning, and I went to uh, Napa and got a brass plug. So this one does have a brass plug and put a plug in that, the one on my Jeep. So anyway, uh, we either get something to block that off or convert it to the uh, something. Okay, I'll be back. Okay guys, it's the next day. I went and got this little plug from uh, Lowe's. Put some uh, little uh, white tape around there and screwed that in there. Uh, I'll see if I can find maybe another water temperature sender or something to put in there. The one I got works. Okay, the little rubber things on the bottom of the radiator. Yeah, I guess they do. Yeah, I guess they do somewhat fit, but I went ahead and got this strip off an old Jeep hood to cowl seal and put that right along the bottom see that's where these go here there and there but I just put that strip down there and we're gonna lay the radiator on top uh, I don't think this shroud is gonna fit this would have to go on before the radiator and slide in but backwards it's I could measure it it's good it would be really close I so don't want it hitting the I don't know I'll set it in like that and see but I I think it's going to hit either down here. I'll see. And uh, they didn't give the right con wiring connectors either. They give a fuse and a relay, but uh, there's no connectors. They give these little round ones, and you, what you need is these square ones. But I, I got some stuff there so I I run the wire because this is about an inch from the fan I'll show you here in a minute uh, so yeah just any any little slop in that's gonna hit the fan so we run it up top there and we'll run some wires out to this battery uh, okay well, let, let me be I'll be back in a minute okay guys it will fit with the shroud on there so uh, it'll be probably right about there right before it hits the metal so yeah you can see the you know, it's got a couple inches before the fan so I run the wires up run the wires up here for the fan two fans right there and uh, there'll be a spot the shroud will have to be elevated up about an inch or so but uh, yeah the rubbers got enough space at the bottom so yeah and uh, see these uh, it's not too bad I guess and figure that out okay I'll be back in a minute okay guys I got this shroud fit right exactly where I had it before so there's plenty of room plenty of room off the like I said I think this is off a of Chevy van 
and I just had it zip tied along the bottom but yeah that should hold okay got the wires coming here they're not bound up or nothing I could probably tie them up somewhere but for now I I connected the negative so here's here's a uh, one fan Here's the other one. We'll connect them both together. Okay. Yeah, those extra fans will give you a little extra protection in case you're you know, this is a clutch fan because this is an AC car. So in case your clutch goes out and it doesn't spin as fast or, you know, you're stuck in traffic or something, click a switch. So, yeah, I'll probably, uh, not right now, but I'll hook up uh, a switch for these two fans. I mean, you could wire it into your temperature and have it come on automatically, but I'd rather turn it off and, off and on manually. Okay, so uh, got the hoses connected, everything fit right, transmission lines fit right, didn't have to bend them out of the way or nothing. Okay, uh, got some new antifreeze here, uh, fixing to put the antifreeze in there, and then we'll, uh, we'll start her up, and... Okay, so I'll be back. Okay, guys, I got it all buttoned up. I just put the wires for the fan right here. Zip tied my overflow right there. No leaks. Okay, I think that'll be it. I might uh I might rinse it off here in a minute uh, I'd like to drive it some more anyway um, I'll put a link in the description they asked what code I wanted to use for a promo code get 5% off and I I put down classics but I haven't heard back from them yet so just go in the description uh, it's alloyworks.com, I believe. I'll have a link, and then uh, I'll put the promo code there, which should be classics. But Okay, because every car should have an aluminum radiator, hot rod, if you're going to drive it, you know, long distances. Oh, I busted this. I used my impact there, and I'll have to fix that later. But yeah, it's a nice upgrade for a car, and it's not very much. You know, they're about 200 bucks or so. It's not bad. Uh, you can get it with or without fans if you don't want the, the extra fans. Okay, uh, I want to thank Louis, Lewis, and uh, Terry for sending some donations. Uh, appreciate it. And then Jason Gale sent a couple of gift cards. One for me for Little Caesar's Pizza. <laughs> And one for pet sense for the dogs. So I have to uh, go into town there and uh, get some treats. Right, Nikki? Nikki, want a treat? You like them rawhide bones, don't you, Nikki? Puppy, not so much, but puppy likes regular treats. Just her teeth are so ground down from ever since she's been a puppy. She's been. Her favorite thing to do is chew on rocks, so her teeth are all ground down, but she likes soft treats. But uh, Nikki, she loves the rawhide bones. So anyway, thanks, thanks guys for that. Uh, every little bit helps. Okay, uh, we'll get back with the Nomad. Like I said, we got it, uh, it's gonna fit in there. We're gonna paint it up, but I wanna fix the AC first. So next uh, video, hopefully we can get the AC going. Then after that, 
just got to sand her down and paint it. Uh, it'll be a it'll be a process there. We got to paint it all black and then uh, then do the flames and clear it and it'll be a few videos long of uh, painting it. So, but it's coming along. Okay, so I think that's it. Uh, unless I add washing it, rinse. I might just rinse it off. You know, I'm bordered by dirt roads, so these things just get filled with dust and dirt in a matter of days. That's one reason I don't really drive them that much, because if I want to drive one, i got to wash it. <laughs> and wash your car before you can drive it. Um, anyway, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And we'll see y'all next video. Thanks everybody for watching. Okay, I just rinsed it off. I'll just drive around the property a little bit.
It's starting to look dirty again after it's rinsed off, but at least I got most of it off. Anyway, see y'all next video.